We didn't get any announcements of any GPUs at GTC this year, like we were all hoping for since it was all canceled due to the pandemic. However, with the recent announcements by Sony and Microsoft, we have learned a little more about RDNA 2, and we also have some recent rumors regarding the NVIDIA 3000 series. In this video, I'll review the latest information and add my analysis to give you a good understanding of what to expect this fall. Let's dive in. Navi 2X, or as I like to say, Navi 2 times. The recent release of specs for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 point to two implementations of RDNA 2. In each of them, we learn a couple of key items. From Sony, we learn that the PlayStation 5 will use a 36 compute unit RDNA 2 based GPU that will have a peak operating frequency of 2.23 GHz. They kept the same number of compute units as the last generation and they focused on optimizing the throughput, including the fastest SSDs, to deliver 4K gaming with an overall smoother console experience beyond even what a PC will deliver. Microsoft took another approach with the Xbox Series X as it uses a 56 compute unit RDNA 2 based GPU that is cut down to 52 compute units to keep yields high and costs low. It is run at a modest 1.825 GHz to keep it within a power envelope of less than 200 watts since the Xbox Series X power supply is only 300 watts for the whole system. In my first Big Navi video, link above and below, I discussed why RDNA 1 does not scale well to create an effective Big Navi since the frequency would be limited. People have overclocked the RX 5700 XT, which is RDNA 1, up to 2.2 GHz through the use of power play mods, but it requires very good quality samples, so you need to be a bit lucky with the silicon lottery. However, what people don't talk much about is how incredibly efficient RDNA 1 can can be with an effective undervolt. I have the RX 5700 XT in the Power Color Red Devil. When running on the overclock bias, it runs at 2 GHz with a 220 watt power consumption. Any attempt to undervolt at this condition makes the card unstable and usually locks it up immediately. However, if I reduce the frequency just 10% to 1.8 GHz, like in the Xbox Series X, the stock voltage setting is 1068 millivolts and the power draw is just 182 watts. That's a 20% power drop for a 10% drop in frequency. The lowest stable undervolt this card will sustain is 966 millivolts, where the power draw is then just over 150 watts, and it can run 24-7 in this manner. That's an improvement in performance per watt of 20%, just in undervolting. RDNA 2 will allow them to run more efficiently across the board. In other words, they won't have to overvolt every chip at higher frequencies just to maintain good yields. This will give them the ability to run at higher frequencies at a lower voltage for a much improved performance per watt. That along with the higher operating frequency up to 2.2 gigahertz and the higher IPC should provide the claimed 50% performance per watt improvement. Everyone is talking about the efficiency improvements of AMD since they moved over to 7 nanometers. But what about the efficiency comparison to Nvidia's Turing architecture, which is still on 12 nanometers? Consider this. An RX 5700 XT has a TDP of 225 watts, compared to a 2070 Super, which is just 215 watts. An RX 5700 with a TDP of 150 watts, compared to a 2060 Super with 175 watts. An RX 5600 XT XT with a TDP of 160 watts, that's after the VBIOS update, to a 2060 with 160 watts, and finally an RX 5500 XT with a TDP of 130 watts to a 1660 Super with 125 watts. Why are the TDPs of Nvidia's 12 nanometer GPUs better than the comparable 7 nanometer GPUs from AMD? People are overlooking how efficient Nvidia's GPUs are today. Nvidia is starting from an already efficient architecture in Turing and they will make it better in Ampere. And it will get even more efficient when it moves to a smaller manufacturing node, be it 10 nanometers or 7 nanometers. With announcements of any GPUs at GTC canceled, we only have some recent rumors for Ampere. The most plausible I saw is from Kitty Corgi, which suggested that the RTX 3080 Ti would be 40% better than a 2080 Ti, and the 3080 would be 10% better than the 2080 Ti, and finally the 3070 would be 5% less than a 2080 Ti, and all of these would be manufactured on Samsung's 10 nanometer process. Historically, if you look at the percent improvements for each generation going all the way back to 
big Kepler, that's the GTX 700 series, you would see a 25 to 30% improvement. So this rumor fits right in like a glove. It is what you would expect. And if you take that latest rumor, then it would reconfigure my charts from my video, Big Navi, Will AMD Finally Win? Link above and below. Those charts were under the assumption that NVIDIA would continue to use TSMC as they would have access to the newer 7 nanometer EUV process. I mean, why not? NVIDIA has been working with TSMC for all of their releases for more than a decade. Why would they not continue to use TSMC? It is not a trivial thing to just jump over to another company's fab. It's a bigger deal than most people think. If we adjust those points based on the latest rumor, you can see that NVIDIA and RDNA 2 are now neck and neck with each other, and it's really too close to call who will win. Nvidia has more to lose. AMD makes CPUs for the desktop, CPUs for laptops, CPUs for servers. So if they introduced a GPU in Big Navi and lost, it would not affect them as much. If Nvidia introduces the 3000 series and loses to Big Navi, it would be a tremendous blow to them. I mean, who is Nvidia? They are a GPU company. They stake their whole reputation on being a leader of GPUs. Nvidia's gaming segment, that's the GeForce graphics card, represents close to half of its revenue. If they lose to Big Navi, it will send shockwaves through the industry, much like Zen 2 is doing through the CPU. CPU market. People's confidence in NVIDIA will drop and it will likely be reflected in their stock. And Jensen is not about to let that happen without a fight. He and his company have way too much to lose. They have shown time and time again that they will fight, even unfairly, to stay on top. In my video, Why Big Navi and RDNA 1 Will Lose to NVIDIA, I described the history of how NVIDIA either had a quick response, like the GTX 680 or GTX 780 Ti, or a preemptive strike, as in the GTX 980 Ti or the the GTX 1080 Ti to an AMD's high-end graphics cards introduced over the last decade. NVIDIA wants it more because they need it more and because they have so much more to lose. NVIDIA will announce the Ampere GPUs for the data center in the late spring and we'll get to see the potential for the high-end gaming card. NVIDIA refreshed the RTX 2000 series as the supers in July of 2019 and they need to launch the new cards by fourth quarter this year. The rumor has that the announcement will occur in August just like it did in 2018 and the AIB partner cards will be shown at the postponed Computex at the end of September. NVIDIA will not launch the high-end RTX 3080 Ti at first. They will go back to what they did prior to the RTX line and launched the TI version later. For example, the GTX 780 was launched in May of 2013 and the 780 Ti followed six months later in November of 2013 to counter the R9 290X release. The GTX 980 was launched in September of 2014 and the 980 Ti followed in June of 2015 to ambush the Fury X release. The GTX 1080 was launched in May of 2016 and the GTX 1080 Ti followed in March of 2017 to ambush the release of Vega. For the past several generations, NVIDIA has always developed the high-end gaming card based on their top-tier die. The GTX 980 Ti was a cut-down Titan X. The GTX 1080 Ti was a cut-down Titan XP. And the RTX 2080 Ti is a cut-down RTX Titan. My prediction? Because NVIDIA has much more to lose than AMD, and because they have many more resources available, they will do anything they can to keep the top spot. They will wait for Big Navi's announcement in October, and they will quickly counter that with their high-end card, whether it's called a RTX 3080 Ti or an RTX 3090, but it will be a cut-down version of the Ampere-based Titan, and it will come out on top against Big Navi in performance, but it will also be more expensive. I am going to get my popcorn and be ready to watch and enjoy how this one is going to unfold. We haven't had this level of competition for the top spot in a long time, and things will certainly get exciting later this year. For Big Navi to win, I think it will take a mishap on the manufacturing side, which I mentioned earlier, jumping to another company and fab is not trivial and does pose a risk and the recent pandemic is not helping Nvidia at all. Let me know in the poll above who do you think will win later this year. That is going to do it for this one. Like it if my rational made sense, dislike it if it didn't, and let me know in the comments below why. Share this with friends, subscribe for more, and also let me know below what graphics card are you saving up for later this year. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.